Hey grasshoppers, it's the end of another term, our second ending of a term on Google Classroom, which is very strange, isn't it? I have to say, I really miss you all. I miss all your jokes. I miss your smiles. I miss you making me laugh in class every day. <laughs> I miss having to tell you to be quiet on the carpet so we can carry on doing our learning. I even miss that. <laughs> Um, you've all had another really amazing term on Google Classroom. I know it's not as much fun as being in the real classroom and I know it's harder to get motivated and make yourself work hard. And the sun's shining now and it's nice and warm and I think that given that and given probably being a bit frustrated of being cooped up inside all day, I think given all those factors you've done remarkably well, okay? so. Uh, we're going into another holiday of me being very proud of you wishing that we could be together doing this but we're together in spirit even if we're not together in bodies okay um i hope you have a nice break just chill out maybe you read your favorite books play some games you could write your own stories um you can do whatever you want just have a nice time um be nice to your families and be nice to yourselves um right i we are on chapter we read chapter 23 yesterday yes we read last yesterday was chapter 23 the square suites that looked round. so today we are reading chapter 24 veruca in the nut room Ooh. mr wonka rushed down the corridor the nut room it said on the next door they came to all right, said Mr. Wonka, stop here for a moment and catch your breath and take a peek through the glass panel of this door, but don't go in. Whatever you do, don't go in to the nut room. If you do go in, you'll disturb the squirrels. The squirrels? Everyone crowded around the door when they heard the squirrels. Oh, look, Grandpa, look, cried Charlie. Squirrels, cried Veruca Sol. Crikey, said Mike TV. It was an amazing sight. One hundred squirrels were seated upon high stools around a large table. On the table, there were mounds and mounds of walnuts, and the squirrels were all working away like mad, shelling the walnuts in at, at a tremendous speed. These squirrels are specially trained for getting the nuts out of walnuts, Mr. Wonka explained. Why use squirrels, Mike TV asked. Why not use Oompa Loompas? Because, said Mr. Wonka, Oompa Loompas cannot get walnuts out of walnut shells in one piece. They always break them in two. Nobody except squirrels can get walnuts out whole of their walnut shells every time. It is extremely difficult. But in my factory, I insist upon only whole walnuts. Therefore, I have the squirrels to do the job. Aren't they wonderful, the way they get those nuts out? And see how they first tap each walnut with their knuckles to be sure it's not a bad one? If it's bad, it makes a hollow sound and they don't bother to open it. They just throw it down the rubber chute. There, look. Watch that squirrel nearest to us. I think he's got a bad one now. They watched the little squirrel as he tapped the walnut shell with his knuckles. He knocked, he cocked his head to one side, listening intently. Then he threw the nut over his shoulder into a very large hole in the floor. So this is a picture of the, of the squirrel <laughs> listening to the walnuts. Hey, mummy, shouted Veruca Salt suddenly. I've decided I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. Don't be silly, sweetheart, said Mrs. Salt. These all belong to Mrs. Won Mr. Wonka. I don't care about that, shouted Veruca. I want one, and I've got at home, all I've got at home is two dogs and four cats and six bunny rabbits and two parakeets and three canaries and a green parrot and a turtle and a bowl of goldfish and a cage of white mice and a silly old hamster. I want a squirrel. Do you think it sounds like Veruca Salt needs a squirrel? I think maybe it sounds like she's already got quite a lot of pets. But I think perhaps she's quite spoiled.
because her parents obviously get her these pets, right? So maybe they'll agree to give her a pet. Okay, swirl, let's see. All right, my pet, Mrs. Salt said soothingly. Mummy will get you a squirrel just as soon as she possibly can. She's a bit spoiled. But I don't want any old squirrel, Veruca shouted. I want a trained squirrel. At this point, Mr. Salt, Veruca's father, stepped forward. Very well, Wonka, he said importantly, taking out a wallet full of money. How much do you want for one of these squirrels? Name your price. He's given in. They are not for sale, said Mr. Wonka. She can't have one. Who says I can't, shouted Fruka. I'm going in to get myself one this very minute. Don't, cried Mr. Wonka, but he was too late. The girl had already thrown open the door and rushed in. The moment she entered the room, 100 squirrels stopped what they were doing and turned their heads and stared at her with small black beady eyes. How would you feel if you had a hundred squirrels staring at you with their small black beady eyes? Veruca Salt stopped also and stared back at them. Then her gaze fell upon a pretty little squirrel sitting next to her at the end of the table. The squirrel was holding a walnut in its paws. All right, Veruca said, I'll have you. And she reached out to grab her hands to grab the squirrel. But as she did so, in that first split second when her hands started to go forward, there was a sudden flash of movement in the room, like a flash of brown lightning. Hmm. And every single squirrel around the table took a flying leap towards her and landed on her body. 25 of them caught hold of her right arm and pinned it down. 25 more caught hold of her left arm and pinned it down. 25 caught hold of her right leg and anchored it to the ground. <coughs> 24 caught hold of her left leg. And the one remaining squirrel, obviously the leader of them all, climbed up onto her shoulder and started tap, tap, tapping the wretched girl's head with its knuckles. Save her, screamed Mrs. Salt. Veruca, come back. What are they doing to her? They're testing to see if she's a bad nut, said Mr. Wonka. You watch. Uh-oh, what happens to the bad nuts when they don't like them? Veruca struggled furiously, but the squirrels held her tight and she couldn't move. The squirrel on her shoulder went tap, tap, tapping the side of her head with its knuckles. Then, all at once, the squirrels pulled Veruca to the ground and started carrying her across the floor. My goodness, she is a bad nut after all, said Mr. Wonka. Her head must have sounded quite hollow. If it's hollow, does that mean she hasn't got much of a brain in there? <laughs> Veruca kicked and screamed, but it was no use. The tiny, strong paws held her tightly and she couldn't escape. Where are they taking her? shrieked Mrs. Salt. She's going where all the other bad nuts go, said Mr. Willy Wonka. Down the rubbish chute. By golly, she is going down the rubbish chute, said Mr. Salt, staring through the glass door at his daughter. Then save her, cried Mrs. Salt. Too late, said Mr. Wonka. She's gone. And indeed, she had. But where, shrieked Mrs. Salt, flapping her arms, what happens to the bad nuts? Where does the chute go to? That particular chute, Mr. Wonka told her, runs directly into the great big main rubbish pipe which carries away all the rubbish from every part of the factory, all the floor sweepings and potato peelings and rotten cabbages and fish heads and stuff like that. Who eats fish head, fish and cabbage and potatoes in this factory? I'd like to know that, said Mike TV. I do, of course, said Mr. Wonka. You don't think I live on cacao beans, do you? But, 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 shrieked Mrs. Salt, where does the great big pipe go into in the end? Why, to the furnace, of course, Mr. Wonka said calmly, to the incinerator. The furnace or the incinerator is where everything is burned. I don't think we want Veruca Salt to go in that, do we? Mrs. Salt opened her huge red mouth and started to scream. Don't worry, said Mr. Wonka. There's always a chance that they've decided not to light it today. A chance, yelled Mrs. Salt. My darling Veruca, she'll, she'll, she'll be sizzled like a sausage. 
Mrs. Mrs. Salt freaking out. Mr. Salt looks pretty annoyed. Mr. Wonka looks slightly amused. Quite right, my dear, said Mr. Salt. Now see here, Wonka, he added. I think you've gone just a shade too far this time. I do indeed. My daughter may be a bit of a frump. I don't mind admitting it. But she doesn't mean that you can roast her to a crisp. I'll have you know I'm extremely cross about this. I really am. Oh, don't be cross, my dear sir, said Mr. Wonka. I expect she'll turn up again sooner or later. She may not even have gone down at all. She may be stuck in the chute just below the entrance hole. And if that's the case, all you'll have to do is go in and pull her up again. Hearing this, both Mr. and Mrs. Salt dashed into the nut room and ran over to the hole in the floor and peered in. Baruka, shouted Mrs. Salt. Are you down there? There was no answer. Mrs. Salt bent further forward to get a closer look. She was now kneeling right on the edge of the hole with her head down and her enormous behind sticking up in the air like a giant mushroom. It was a dangerous position to be in. She needed only one tiny little push, one gentle nudge in the right place. And that is exactly what the squirrels gave her. Over she toppled into the hole head first, screeching like a parrot. Good gracious me, said Mr. Salt as he watched his fat wife go tumbling down the hole. What a lot of rubbish there's going to be today. He saw her disappearing into the darkness. What's it like down there, Angina? He called out. He leaned further forward. The squirrels rushed up behind him. What's going to happen? Help, he shouted. But he was already toppling forward. Down the chute he went, just as his wife had done before him and his daughter. Oh dear, cried Charlie, who was watching with the others through the door. What on earth is going to happen to them now? I expect someone will catch them at the bottom of the chute, said Mr. Wonka. But what about the great fiery incinerator? asked Charlie. They only light that every other day, said Mr. Wonka. Perhaps this is one of the days when they let it go out. You never know. They might be lucky. Shh, said Grandpa Joe. Listen. Here comes another song. Far, far away down the corridor came the beating drums. Then the singing began. Baruch Assault, sang the Impa Lumpers. Baruch Assault, the little brute, has just gone down the rubbish chute. And as we very rightly thought, that in a case like this we ought to see a thing completely through, we've polished off her parents too. Down goes Veruca down the drain, and here perhaps we should explain that she will meet as she descends a rather different set of friends to those she has left behind. These won't be nearly so refined. A fish head, for example, cut this morning from a halibut. Halibut's type of fish. Hello, good morning, how do you do? How, how nice to meet you, how are you? And, and then a little further down, a mass of others gather round, a bacon rind, some rancid lard, he was off, rotten, a loaf of bread gone stale and hard, a steak that nobody could chew, an oyster from an oyster stew, some liverwurst so old and gray. One smelled it from a mile away, a rotten nut, a reeky pear, a thing that cat left on the stair, and lots of other things as well, each with a rather horrid smell. These are Veruca's newfound friends that she will meet as she descends, and this is the price she has to pay for going so very far astray. But now, my dears, we think you might be wondering, is it really right? that every single bit of blame and all the scolding and the shame should fall upon Veruca Salt. Is she the only one at fault? For though she is spoiled and dreadfully so, a girl can't spoil herself, you know. Who spoiled her then? Ah, who indeed? Who pandered to her every need? Who turned her into such a brat? Who are the culprits? Who did that? Alas, you needn't look so far to find out who these sinners are. They are, and this is very sad, her loving parents, mum and dad. 
And that is why we're glad they fell into the rubber shoot as well. And that is the end of chapter 24. Those Oompa Loompas are not impressed with how spoiled Veruca Salt is. And they think that her mum and dad are to blame. So that's the lesson that we've learned today, grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, I hope you have a lovely break. I miss you. I will really look forward to hopefully having some sort of video call with you after half term. Um, yeah, big love to all of you. Big hugs. Bye.